The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's the Wrestling Life. It's episode 271, July 9th, 2021. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things we can't talk about, especially not Bret Hart's cage match page, uh, <laughs> right here on the first and the only wrestling podcast. Yeah, this is not a super uh, heavy news week, so we might get into some uh, <laughs> Bret Hart Cage Match page later here, but or, or stay tuned to the bonus content after the show if that's your jam, everyone, because <laughs> I spent a lot of time on Bret Hart's Cage Match profile page this week. A deep dive into Bret's 2010 <laughs> house show run available now. Absolutely bizarre. But you will never guess who he had his last match against. <laughs> <laughs> but regardless... More current and, uh, I suppose, important question mark stuff is going on. WWE has their last two shows in the Thunderdome coming up with uh, Friday Night Smackdown here and then a taped Raw on Monday. And then they're back in front of fans next weekend for Smackdown, Money in the Bank, Monday Night Raw. What is the fans' reaction going to be to... WWE. Yeah, I it's gonna be interesting. I I think the you would think right the first couple of shows back there's it's it's Goodwill City. Oh sure, the fans are happy to be back. I would think but, they'll be rabid. Everyone will be over. Yeah, I mean, I think we saw a little bit of that. It was difficult because they were in such a big stadium at Mania, but like no none of the good guys really got booed or you know no you know no one the the fans didn't go off script on on who they <laughs> right. booed or cheered at mania so right. yeah i think people are just going to be happy to see pe- wrestlers they recognize <laughs> <laughs> yes. see television personalities live and in color that's right yeah we'll see um money in the bank they've continued to build that program two more spots to be decided i think on this week's smackdown um, not a, uh, Drew, Drew McIntyre really seems to be the only guy who's been positioned to win this thing. We'll see how that goes. Uh, thoughts on, um, money in the bank build, either the men or the women's match. Well, uh, I should note that, uh, Drew now has a cool guy leather jacket. He's worn that on and off. Uh, yeah. Just... He's a, he's a big Bret Hart mark. So. Yes. I mean, aren't we all? There's, there is actually, speaking of Brett, the, uh, <laughs> the, A, the A&E documentary they did on Brett, like there's a section in there where Drew talks about how he does a suplex exactly how Brett does it and just practice that for yeah. like years upon years of his career to get it exactly right. So yeah, he is a giant, uh, a giant Brett Mark. And, and so, so we all should be. <laughs> I'm, I'm wearing a Bret Hart t-shirt as we speak. There you go. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, that's yeah. I, I, other than Drew, um, the, we've as we discussed last week, we love us some Matt Riddle right now. By we, I mean Vince McMahon. You know, I hate him as a person, but his character is funny and really the only thing entertaining on Monday Night Raw right now. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean he's doing he's doing his job as. <laughs> <laughs> very well um and he he's a big goofball and he's playing a big goofball well and i could see uh riddle in that spot as well i think it depends we talk about this every year around <laughs> money in the bank do they feel like making us trying to make a star this year or just reaffirming the stars they already have right often they go the latter <laughs> When is the last time they actually made a star with that thing? Um, I can argue. I mean, I was going to say Ambrose, but that's kind of laughable because he had like a three month run. Um, uh, I mean, all those Shield guys were protected and over from the from the time they debuted. So I'm not sure if the that was like the thing. But okay. Uh, I mean, the cash in I feel like helps Seth a little bit, but then. 
again, yeah. like you said, he's been he was positioned to be a top star either way. Yeah. Um, and then I don't. There's like there's like eight years that I just don't remember who won. Like Braun won it one year. Ugh. Brock won it one year. Uh, right, Brock Lesnar. <laughs> Money in the bank <laughs> contract winner. Yes, he, he wasn't even in the match, right? No, he, like, yeah, he came that, down they the like, end. Yeah, they, and they literally told the wrestlers in the ring that Mustafa Ali was winning, and then oh, and then Brock runs out. Yeah, <laughs> tremendous. <laughs> Let's look at the last few here. Uh, Brock, okay, Otis, obviously. Which, oh, how could I forget? Which, but they got cold feet on that, and uh, they took it away from him. Yes, Michael Mazan uh, won 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 the world championship three months ago. You might remember. Right, right. So we had uh, uh, Brock Lesnar and Bailey the year before that. Bailey cashed in the same night, I think. Right. Hmm. Um, the year before that, we had Braun Strowman. Mm. Uh, let's see. He cashed in at Hell in a Cell that year. I, but he announced it ahead of time. I suppose. Yes, and Brock, uh, Brock. That's that. That was the first of like the three years in a row where Hell in a Cell ended in a no contest. Uh so stupid. Let's see. Uh, we had uh, Baron Corbin the year before that. Obviously, he never. He was one of the losers. So. Right. Changed uh, our minds. Yes, Dean Ambrose the year before that. Uh. By 2016, I feel like Dean Ambrose was already kind of a main man. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, we could argue that point, but I mean, he was on a he was on a level above the Zigglers of the world, certainly. Right. Um, she- Sheamus the year before that, gosh, who cashed in on Roman Reigns? <laughs> Naturally, or they waited. They waited to make Roman Reigns champion for like for three years. And then they put the title on Roman Reigns and took it off of him in a half an hour. <laughs> yeah, classic stuff. Unbelievable. Seth Rollins before that, Randy Orton before that, <laughs> Damian Sandow before that, they beat him. Right. <laughs> John Cena before that. <laughs> yeah, really not in star making mode there. Woof. Back to, uh, let's see, 2011, we had. Del Rio, Daniel Bryan. It's like they were still trying back then. To, yeah. That's a year they made people. Okay, yeah. Cause... M- Miz and Kane the year before that. Jack Swagger the year before that. CM yeah. Punk the year before that. So it's really been since like 2011 that they have not really tried to make anybody new. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That that might be like a microcosm <laughs> of why why the shows feel a little bit stagnant. Sure. Days. I mean, they've well, the thing they've put, you know, guys have won the title for the first time in that time frame since then. Your Jinder Mahal's, your <laughs> your AJ Styles, your uh, Drew McIntyre's. Um, but yeah, they they haven't really used Money in the Bank as this like elevation tool the way it was maybe initially envisioned. Correct. Yes. So we'll have to see how that goes. Um, Money in the Bank, <laughs> it's 2021. On the women's side, let's see. We had Asuka last year, who, in one of the great moments in the history of the company, ended up uh, winning the title in the match. Mm-hmm. Early the year before that, uh, Lex Bliss, Carmella. I don't, I don't, I don't know what they're doing this year. I, I just, <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. They could they could fire somebody, but they're pushing like the day before the show. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. There's no rules anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's complete madness. Yeah, so I don't know. Like, I guess l- leading into that, uh, Zelina Vega is in that match. Yeah, they brought um, her back and beat her in her first match back. That'll, that'll show her. That'll show her. Isn't that the classic WWE move? I mean that. I mean, yeah. Let's. We're gonna. So we fire you or agree to a release, whatever happens. Right. Uh, eventually, decide you decide you're gonna come back sometime. And I don't know about what the gray area is exactly, but it seems like she signed. Then they 
her husband uh or at least she was she was already had had been like seen at the performance center before he was cut so oh yeah yeah like that she had pretty much decided to come back like two months before they fired her husband (laughs) right so and and then they finally bring her back to tv here and beat her immediately so yeah that was uh that all I mean, I know they didn't fire her husband. To... <laughs> Old Vince would have fired her husband just to mess with her. But this time it was probably just because he was making a lot of money. But relatively speaking. Right. This but, is just Nick. Yes. This is, this is just <laughs> the cold, the cold, unfeeling eyes of Nick Khan. <laughs> right. Right. So Zelina Vega comes back, loses immediately. To me, that was the... CM Punk losing to Triple H in like whatever year that was, 2011. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Where it's like 2011 getting a lot of play on this show. Yeah. So, like, the last time they even tried to be a wrestling company, it's like, <laughs> okay, well, you, we will make you, we will let you in to the Top Guy Club, but you are going to have to kiss our ring and kneel, <laughs> kneel before the McMahon throne. That's right. And then you'll be in the Top Guy Club. That's what they did with Punk. They made him lose to Triple H, and then they let him in the Top Guy Club. Selena, it's like, all right, we'll bring you back. We need to humble you first. You will lose. (laughs) We will completely shoot ourselves in the foot. Not that she's like, you know, some needle mover, difference maker, whatever. But (laughs) I wouldn't hire someone and then immediately make them look bad on TV. Yes, yeah, like a really weird thing to do. <laughs> uh, yeah, like I that was yeah that just felt very bizarre, especially because they had to lose to Liv Morgan, who, like, a- again, as her documentary on the WWE Network is shown, <laughs> they don't know what they're like. They're gonna they're they'll push her for two weeks, and then they'll decide it isn't working, and she'll and she'll either be back to doing jobs or she'll just not be on TV for a while. So it's not like. It's not like she had like a competitive match with the champion and, you know, got bested or whatever, which it would still be weird to bring someone back and beat them immediately. But at least then you can make the argument, well, but we showed them, you know, take the take the champ to the limit or whatever. It's like, no, she just lost to someone that they don't. It's like coming back and like losing to Curtis Axel or something <laughs> like. Right. No offense. No, maybe, rest maybe Bo case. Dallas. Maybe Bo Dallas would be a better well uh, analogy given the uh <laughs> given the person we're talking about but sure. Sure. yeah so they, that's the thing that they did uh smackdown mm, kind of boring uh jimmy uso main event jimmy uso another dui right yes this is the third or fourth one in the last couple of years here i think if you go back like 10 or 11 years it's number I think it's only the officially officially the third DUI because the police botched the field sobriety test and the one where he was with his wife. Ah, <laughs> and so I don't think charges ever officially came out of that one. But it's his fourth alcohol related incident in like eleven years. Yeah, I don't know, man. Like again, I'm not. I don't want. I'm not here to make light of anybody's problems. Uh. You know, if he needs to seek help, I encourage him to do so. Don't want no shame in that at all. But that being said, if you just like to drink and you don't feel it's a problem, and you know, and to a certain extent, only you know if it if you have a problem with with that kind of stuff. Uh, you're rich, man. Call an Uber. Yeah, you can, get, you can get the nice Uber, the the Uber XL, where they pick you up in like a nice SUV. Yeah, if if that's an, if that's important to you, like you don't just don't just don't drive, man. Have as many uh, soda pops as you want. Just don't, uh, you know, don't just don't get behind the wheel of a car. Like it's not that. I don't think it should not be that uh, uh, that complicated. Really, really shouldn't, and uh, don't, doesn't really have a whole lot to do with wrestling. So not going to spend a ton of time on it, but. WWE usually releases the so-and-so is responsible for their own actions uh, statement. No statement from them this time. Weird. Yeah, they're just kind of just looking the other way. 
he's uh he's related to the right people he's in a high pro the really the only program on smackdown <laughs> <laughs> the reigns family drama so uh we'll have to see what if anything comes of this so uh bianca belair and bailey are wrestling in an i quit match Sasha Banks is coming back soon. I assume Sasha Banks is wrestling Bianca Belair at SummerSlam just because what else they got? Yeah, that's, I mean, it's been Bailey literally all, uh, all summer or uh, all spring and summer here. So yes. they maybe they could have put, you know, one of the women that's in money in the bank in that spot instead. And, uh, but I think I think they've already done like Carmella and and Bianca on TV. Not that that would be like a, a barn burner of a program, <laughs> but it it would be someone besides Bailey, <laughs> right? Roman Reigns and Edge for the Universal Championship. Um, Edge has been pretty good since coming back. Cut some effective mm-hmm. promos, uh, but clearly looks like they're spinning that off into Edge and Seth Rollins. They're not even being particularly subtle about it. Yeah, no, it's. Just... <laughs> They're really kind of hitting you over the head with it. And at this point, it's it's a, it's one of those moments where if this happens and, and Seth costs Edge the match, like, well, it's really on Edge because <laughs> it, was, it was pretty obvious what was going to happen here. Uh, right. you, in and out of uh, storyline or in and out of the, uh, the fictional world. Yeah. Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair for the Raw Women's Championship. Terrible program. Bro. <laughs> Has hurt everyone involved. That crutch thing on raw (laughs) like and again we don't we don't spend a lot of time going over raw in detail because one you can find other shows to do that and two it's it would be the same stuff right it's it's too long the camera cuts are (laughs) annoying nobody's over like you know and so we we try to save it for like when so so we don't necessarily talk about this program every week in detail right but my god (laughs) that crutch it was so weird (laughs) and awkward and like and then they're like jousting with the crutches and the announcers didn't know how to sell it right and court and to your like i you know personal feelings of the man aside i think Corey graves has been he's had to do a lot of work right he's basically the lead play-by-play guy and the lead color guy and has been for several months right (laughs) so he's got he's got a lot to do and i think he's doing as good of a job as one could expect him to do in that scenario (laughs) sure uh, and even he's like, I guess, I guess they were both, I guess they're both fine. <laughs> like he didn't know what to do with it. Right. And it's like, this is the most plugged in, like with it announcer you've got. And he doesn't know what you're going for here with this. Right. Yeah. Really bad, really bad program. Um, there's no baby face in the program. Like Rhea was very clearly the heel at the outset of the program. There hasn't really been a turn for her. And yet Charlotte is extremely a heel. (laughs) Right. Yeah. So there's like this three month long heel, all heel program going on with bad finishes and bad angles. Yes. (laughs) They had the one good like pull apart angle a month ago. And it's everything else they've done with these two has just been weird and bad yes terrible bob bob lashley is gonna wrestle kofi kingston who is boy they um they're gonna get some heat in uh fort worth or wherever that show's taking place if they uh, if they put bob lashley over that night because kofi is it's gonna kofi mania his way into another title he's been really good and Yeah, I mean, I think we saw that. I think it was the Rumble, the last Rumble before everything shut down, where it was Brock was going through everybody in the Rumble, mm-hmm. and then Kofi's Kofi came out, and like people were on their feet <laughs> because they wanted Kofi to get revenge on Brock, right? Because he never got to like even have a rematch for the belt after he lost it, right? And the fans still love Kofi, and it's like. <sighs> And then Brock just <laughs> threw him out. Right. And it's like, because you're stupid if you thought, you know, right. you're, you're bad. You're dumb and bad if you thought that Kofi Kingston <laughs> was, a, was a real main eventer. Right. Um, but, anyway, but yeah, so that's, I think, especially, yeah, especially coming out there, that could be a, 
I mean, it, look, at least at least at that point, you can say, well, Lashley's a heel. We want him to get booed or whatever. But right, man. Yeah. Kofi's been really good. MVP has been very good as well. Um, and it's it's pretty like it's it's not like rocket science build either. You know, like it's just right. just it's the the fiery, the fiery never say die baby face with, you know, hits that kick and it's over. Like so we're just we're just waiting to see. Can he hit the kick on Bob? Right. Yeah. Lashley, very good in this role. Mm-hmm. Um, Imagine that it took them like <laughs> tw- 20 years, like 13 years to figure out, oh, Bob should just be a big badass who kills everybody. Yeah, it took, it took that long, but they finally, they finally did it. The problem is he is so good <laughs> at his role, he's, he's going to get cheered. <laughs> and, then the, and then he's going to be a baby face by default, and Vince is in love with him, so it's not going to be the kind of thing where they <laughs> take the title off of him because he's all, you know, he's a baby face now. It's just like, no, he's still going to be portrayed as a heel who beats everybody <laughs> dominantly <laughs> and uh, doesn't lose the title, who gets cheered. It's going to be very bizarre. Yeah, it's going to be weird. Uh, going to be a weird scenario. <laughs> Are we still going Drew? to beat him eventually or i mean i guess he well, can't they said he can't so i mean right. unless so unless you know kofi or somebody beats bob and then drew cashes in on them but i don't yeah that's weird i don't know i don't know how that plays out i don't uh let's see the men's money in the bank uh ricochet john morrison who just wrestle each other on tv every week sure it's it's fine johnny drip drip is also like <laughs> one of the bright spots on Monday Night Raw. I'll give him that. I do rue the day that WWE social media uh, team learned the word drip. But <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Not not a great day in history, but he is... Uh... No, he's very entertaining. Like, he, like yeah. I, he's rehabbed himself in my eyes. Oh, a thousand percent. From a guy I never cared if I saw again when he left in whatever that was, 2012. And yeah. to where he is now. Where it's like, yeah, he's pretty consistently entertaining. I mean, it's comedy comedy mid-card heel stuff but it's yeah. it's good yeah drew mcintyre riddle biggie kevin owens uh and then cesaro and seth are wrestling for a shot and nakamura and corbin are wrestling for a shot so <laughs> nakamura and corbin <laughs> low-key terrible feud as, <laughs> as well nakamura i don't have a problem with the king thing uh rick boogs one of two muscle-bound guitar players who <laughs> not a particularly good wrestler in wwe right now Mm -hmm. i don't even really have a problem with that but the the uh the corbin thing where they're gonna make him some kind of sad sack i don't know heel question mark baby face question mark uh (laughs) really bad you all and if there was a little bit more to it other than (laughs) they just wrestle every week (laughs) right right i mean i guess nakamura took his crown that's the that's the wrinkle to it. Yes, but. the good guy stole from the bad guy. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, and again, since they wrestle every week, you could have like had Nakamura wins one, Corbin wins one. Maybe Nakamura wins a second one, and we're like, it's all done, and Corbin's so furious and demands one more match against Nakamura, and he goes, I'll even put my crown on the line. And then Nakamura beats him again for the crown. All right, and then that would be like, all right, that's a story. There, I, feel like right? that, I feel like that is what happened. Is that exactly what happened? <laughs> Did I forget? This? I think Corbin beat Nakamura. Like, I'm not going to go look up SmackDown results, but I think Nakamura. I mean, I know won. they traded wins for like four straight weeks. I know that. Right. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But and I'm then, just saying, but, like, make that part of the story that they're trading wins, and then one of them gets the other. Like, I guess well, in this case, since since Corbin has the item to put up, have <laughs> have nakamura win two in a row right where he has the upper hand and and corbin says give me one more and i'll put the crown up and and nakamura beats him for the crown or whatever but right yeah they didn't really play that up and they didn't make a play uh make a show of having corbin being the one to put the crown up it was just like oh well they're wrestling for the crown this week (laughs) yeah okay i stole the crown and then and then they're like let's have a match for the crown that i stole yes and and rick and rick and shin make corbin look like an idiot every week so. Yes, I mean at least it's the heel being made to look like an idiot, <laughs> I guess. But then yes. he is being ganged up on by two guys, I guess. But <laughs> two baby faces, <laughs> two fellas. What? 
Rick Boogs and Elias, Mm -hmm. both muscle-bound guitar players who are not particularly good wrestlers, who have excellent charisma. We now have a, a guitar player on Raw and a guitar player, a troubadour on SmackDown. What are we doing? <laughs> they have to meet, right? Like you in would, any other company, you would, this would lead to like a guitar on a pole match or something. You would, you would think, and only one guy gets to play guitar when it's over. Why do we have a guitar player on each show? I, well, one's an electric guitar player, one's an acoustic guitar player. So mm, there's, there's your that. variety. <laughs> there's one that. of them exclusively wrestles. Uh, what's his name? And the other guy, the other guy is just Shins- Shins- yeah. Shinsuke's friends. Right. One wrestles Jackson Riker and right. uh, that Chris without Jackson Riker. And the other one uh, never wrestles. So there's that. Yeah. All right. Uh, Women's Money in the Bank, Asuka, Naomi, Alexa Bliss, Nikki almost a superhero uh carmela is lena vega and then two spots to be determined doesn't matter doesn't matter there's gonna be be raw people filling those spots right because there aren't really any other wrestlers on smackdown couldn't tell you (laughs) i have no guess i I guess it could be live and and somebody but yeah live and then somebody from raw they're making a story out of live petitioning sonya to put her in the match on SmackDown. And she says, well, I'll prove it. And I prove that I belong in that match by beating Carmella every week. And then she does. And Sony still hasn't put her in the match. So is <laughs> Sonya a heel? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Because like everybody else just kind of got into the match. I mean, I guess they did some qualifying matches, but it feels this is, this with, is the non-consistent the... thing. Yes. With the women, some of them, they just said Sonya put them in. Right. So... I just, I just I would love to I would love to know the process. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Some of All... the deep lore experts, <laughs> please explain to me how uh, Adam Pierce and Sonya decide who gets put into one of these matches and who has to do a qualifying match and who has to have a series of matches that may or may not impress them enough to be selected to be put into a match. Beautiful transition by you. The deep lore. The deep Mm. lore of Malachi Black has debuted in AEW. So the story here, his 90-day non-compete was not up. He didn't have a 90-day non-compete, though. They forgot to switch his non-compete to a 90-day. From a 30-day to a 90-day when they called him up to the main roster. So he only had to be off TV for 30 days before he was free to go elsewhere. But apparently they called Buddy Murphy in a panic because they thought (laughs) <laughs> they forgot to switch his non-compete and he's like no i can't go anywhere till uh august 31st or september 1st or whatever the date was and uh really they forgot with uh malachi black who thinks this s is game of thrones or something <laughs> so he's an AEW now and apparently to feud with cody Ugh. Maybe not a fan. We'll... Not a fan. I'm g- gathering that you're not a fan of Malachi Black. I am sure he is a lovely fellow. Are you? <laughs> uh, no, but I say that before I say mean things about people. Right. Uh, what same I with them. sandwich compliment. Yes. Um, and it's great that that he's very creative and that he puts a lot of thought into his stuff. That being said, <laughs> wrestling. <laughs> is not overflowing currently with characters that are just like cool, badass kickboxers. Right. Which is what he could be and what he, I guess, to a certain extent, I don't know how much actual training he's done, but I, my impression is he does at least some, you know, kickboxing training and stuff like that, but he comes by that naturally. So he could just be like a cool shooter, but he's been fiend pilled. <laughs> And so he has determined that not only does he have to be a spooky magic character, but that he needs to add to his deep lore with his colors in his gear and the lights that shine during his promos and all this other stuff. And I'm just like, what, what do you think this is? Where do you think you are? (laughs) And in what scenario did you think Vince McMahon 
and Bruce Pritchard were going to go for any of your ideas. So you're saying it doesn't pay to try. I not, not with this. Look, <laughs> the undertaker was very successful. All right. Yes. yes. That's one example of a spooky magic character working. Right. I can rattle off a list of a lot of other spooky magic characters that they tried to make work that didn't work and are now on like when WWE does a thing making fun of itself, like they're all in that highlight reel. Your 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 Papa Shangos, your Damian Dementos, your your Mount your Mordecai's, right. your Kevin Thorne. Yes. Same guy, right? <laughs> I actually forget. I think I think Kevin Thorne and Malika. Or Kevin Mordecai. Thorne was the ECW vampire guy, right? Right. But yeah, I think I think he also played the white 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 haired uh, Undertaker foe for two weeks on SmackDown. Mordecai. Um, right. Like, there's a lot of examples of this just not working. Bray Wyatt, <laughs> mostly <laughs> bad. <laughs> Very creative guy. Almost everything he's done has been bad. Um, so I guess, look, a lot of people seem to like this. So who am I to stand in the way? But when I saw him on TV and he had like weird makeup or, and like a, a, a colored contact in his one eye, cause he's still playing up an injury he got on raw last year that like nobody remembers. Right. Uh, I just, I just wasn't feeling it. And when you add in that he's going to be feuding with Cody Rhodes. Uh, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not ready for Malachi Black versus Brock Anderson, I guess is what I'm saying. <laughs> Cody, arguably like the most realism based, which, which is funny considering he's like this huge worker as a human, <laughs> as, as a human being, but the most reality based wrestler in AEW, arguably, feuding with a guy who thinks he's in an episode of Game of Thrones. It's yeah, an, it's, I, it's an interesting mix. Yeah, I mean, right. Whatever you want to say about <laughs> Cody, right? Almost all of his programs are like 70s wrestling, right? Like it's yes, it's real all... simple southern wrestling. A lot of them are, you know, a lot of the angles he does are direct homages if you want or, or rehashes <laughs> whatever word you want to use right. ripoffs to, of old you know of wcw nwa angles right um so yes mixing that with something like that is maybe more would be more at home in like dungeon of doom wcw uh would be is very interesting to me <laughs> yeah it doesn't scream this is going to work at me but yeah, we'll see. They So AEW returned to crowds with Dynamite this week, and they kicked off their first show with Cody facing QT Marshall. How do you feel about that? In a strap match. In the a worst s- of all <laughs> stipulations. It's a bad stipulation. Well, yeah, like, I mean, the match itself was fine, but, like, it was got, a strap match. We got juice. Get juice in the opener in front of fans. Yeah, yeah, of course. And, and it was it's Cody's match, and it was, I guess, the big blow off of this QT feud because Cody yeah. needed to be freed up for uh for Malachi Black later in the show. Um yeah. God, I hope so. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready for no more QT Marshall uh on the show. Uh he can go back to AEW Dark or wherever he was. Before uh, before they turned him heel, is Dustin just going to feud with him now though? Again, oh. <laughs> Dustin's going to be shooting his own angles on social media. <laughs> God bless Dustin Rhodes; he's great. Yes, and like I'm sure he, if they do like a gimmick match between him and QT on television, it would probably be good. A but sec- a second one? Did they do one? Well, he did one with the the big muscle right. man, right? Confort con. Fordo or whatever mr freak beast yes um so yeah maybe maybe they'll do something else with dustin and the the and big shoddy lee and 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 brock maybe they'll <laughs> they'll spin off with dustin to uh to feud to feud with uh 
QT for a while and Cody will be freed up to uh yeah to defend Arn's honor against yeah. uh, Mr. Black. But yeah. uh, the issues between the nightmare family and the factory aren't will not be put to bed that easily. No, of course not. That's yeah, you know, that's the feud for the ages. Right. Other than QT opening the show. <laughs> look, Dan Lambert's a hell of a promo. Strange decision to give a guy from American Top Team like seven minutes of promo time on your two hour wrestling show on TNT that just led to like Lance Archer hitting blackout on him. But that was a choice. But aside from that, I thought it was a pretty good show. What did you think of Dynamite this week? Yeah, it turns out wrestling's better with crowds. Uh, <laughs> significantly better. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because uh, I, I've made the mistake a few times in the last uh, few months of listening to Chris Jericho's podcast on occasion. Why? I don't know. Sometimes he has people on there. And I'm just curious. I was listening to him and Lana talk the other day. It was weird. Someone holding uh, you at gunpoint? No, I just hate myself. Um, <laughs> well, that's relatable. <laughs> sure. That's, <laughs> that's what brings it back home. But anyway, but he was talk. He's taught. He told this story on like two or three of the ones that I've listened to about wrestling during the pandemic and how weird it was to wrestle without fans and being in the ring with Orange Cassidy during one of their matches and Cassidy asking him, did I sell that too long? And Chris telling him, Chris said he told him, I don't know. <laughs> because we don't have any fans here. So I don't know if we, you know, if there was a lull or not, because there were no there was no one here to tell us. Right. Um, and so yeah, it, it turns out uh wrestling wrestling in front of fans generally pretty great. I thought the the main event was, you know, like it's it's again, if you if you liked 2015 New Japan Pro Wrestling <laughs> Bullet Club main events, that's what that's what you're getting with with the young bucks pretty much every week. Um, but it was a really good match. Lots of plunder and, and hardcore stuff. And, uh, that hangman angle I thought was really, really good. Yeah. Hangman is going to wrestle Kenny Omega for the world title soonish. I'm assuming all out and, uh, and it's going to be great. Yeah. Like, and even like just, you could just see when he stood up on the apron and he was ready and like in the position for the lariat, like everyone stood up. Yep. Like it was, it was just one of those things like, Oh, you forget like how cool this was like, (laughs) this was like a moment. Like remember when there were moments in wrestling that made us like, remember why we like wrestling. Yep. It's been a while. is what I'm saying. Um, And one of these days he's going to hit, he's going to hit the buckshot lariat from that spot because he's had like two or three chances to hit it. Mm-hmm. where he's teased it where they've made a point to show you him teasing it and he hasn't hit it yet right he could have but he chose not to right so when he chooses to unload on him it's going to be great yep. one question i have and and we'll we'll see as we <laughs> get closer to to this actual match happen it's been a very long time like over a decade i'm pretty sure is hangman the guy to kick out of the one winged angel i don't i mean that's up to kenny right and sure. I don't see him giving that to Hangman, but I don't know. I don't. I don't know the dynamics of their personal relationship very well. Mm-hmm. But I would have thought, well, it's only only Ibushi's ever going to kick out of that. Yeah, I think that's that's fair. <laughs> um, that, that that those were the two names. I was like, well, if Hangman doesn't kick out of it, I don't think necessarily he needs to. Right. Um, but obviously, but you know that like that is one of those things where the day that happens is going to be an event and there's feels like a very short list of people it could possibly be because obviously it wasn't Okada. It wasn't Tanahashi. So it's, it's a, if it's either he gets that dream match with Ibushi one day and he holds out for that or he gives it up here to Hangman, I think. Yeah. Well, something, something to keep an eye on. That's interesting. All right, so uh, that's uh, AEW, that's WWE. Uh, there's a state of emergency declared in Tokyo through the end of the Olympics. New Japan, which is who has canceled shows because of this in the past, has decided to just ignore this and operate business as usual. <laughs> <laughs> just certainly 
a choice. They announced the G1 dates. They have their entire Summer Struggles tour, which kicks off uh, this weekend. Very cold promotion, but uh, main event matches still deliver. So uh, if you're a fan, get ready for all of this content coming up over the next several months. They're, they do not understand the basic law of supply and demand, though. They're like, here, here's some here's some supply. And they're like, well, there's not a whole lot of demand for it right now. They're like, no, more supply. <laughs> and like, but we have we have plenty. Thank you. And they're like, no, supply, more supply. <laughs> and no, if we give them more supply, the demand will increase. Well, that's not really. <laughs> no, that's not how it works. Yeah, that's not usually how that works. But not how it works. Yeah, I understand them being in a spot where they they feel like they need to run shows. But we'll yeah, see. I mean, it's just it's just it is really fascinating how business over there, that, which is just here, it is nothing but television. That's the only thing that matters anymore. Yes, and I guess to a lesser extent now, you know, if you're if you're AEW or any of these other promotions, you're probably trying to find a streaming deal as well. Right. Good luck, but. Right. Um, so it's like, it's just all about that here and, and merchandise and ticket sales and all that stuff is the last thing anyone cares about. Right. We just spent a year where WWE probably made more money, not selling a single ticket than they ever have in their entire existence. For sure. Yep. So, and like the, and the merchandise numbers didn't drop all that much either. Right. <laughs> So like they, so we learned some lessons here <laughs> yeah. uh, about how you know where where their business truly comes from at this point, where their revenues truly comes from. And on you know the other side of the world, it's we're still we're still got we still gotta make these towns, brother. Like it's it's yep. wild, man. Yep. Yep. Their uh, their English language website is njpw1972.com because they were uh, founded in nineteen seventy two. And in many ways, their business model is still stuck in 1972. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a shame. All right. Uh, is there anything else that you want to get into? I believe we've covered all the pertinent data. Yeah, no, I guess uh, be- best wishes to Terry Funk. I guess there was some somewhat conflicting reports about his health this week. But sure. Um, but yeah, he's, it's, you know. Terry Funk's amazing, and it, you think about the eras he covered. Like, I don't want to eulogize a man who is, by all accounts, not he's not on death's door or anything. But it's yeah, great, great, and everyone that knows him seems to love him. So, the thing with dementia too, and we know this from personal experience, is that mm-hmm. it's, it's not a linear, you know, point A to point Z decline. You could, yeah, you can have a conversation with someone with dementia and they're just fine. And then a half hour later, they'll ask you who you are. <laughs> yep. And then a half hour after that, they'll be angry for no reason that you're there. And then you'll step out of the room and come back 10 minutes later and they'll be, Oh, Hey, how are you? You know, it's not, it is a <laughs> right uh, linear decline necessarily. So I believe like Tommy dreamer who calls him said, he's still very mentally with it. It's like, I'm sure it depends on the day. Yeah, yeah, I think that's as you said. That's that's very common for for people with uh, with that uh, affliction. But yep. yeah, either way, Terry Funk's awesome. So that's that's where we'll end it this week. I call I use the term "satchel ass" <laughs> <laughs> on a weekly basis, at least in in describing people, and that's of course someone whose ass is wider than their shoulders. <laughs> Satchel ass. Uh, promo apparently Terry Funk cut on like ECW.com back in the day when feuding with McFoley in WWE's version of ECW, saying his daddy told him not to trust anyone <laughs> whose ass is wider than his shoulders. That person is a satchel ass, and Mick Foley is a satchel ass. <laughs> tremendous i do remember uh hearing that that drop on uh on some old brian and Vinny clips on youtube so yeah i think yes. that that was a uh, legendary uh too yes it despite what uh someone who tweets once a week about how oh the iwc if it existed in 2005 would have hated this no it did exist uh back then and and uh it it turns out there there was a, an internet a lot of internet wrestling fans at that time and and <laughs> terry funk 
<laughs> shouting satchel ass was a uh, was a legendary uh, moment in that uh, in that community by all accounts yep all right let's get out of here till next time i'm ethan and i'm liam and we'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life bye bye Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. <sighs> we'll fill yeah. 45 minutes somehow. I would say it'll be no problem. And it is it is NWO week, so we could always fall back on like <laughs> WWE itself. We could always fall back on uh, nostalgia. nostalgia about the the nineties and how much better it it was. Yeah, I spent a lot of time on Bret Hart's cage match last night. Bret Hart's cage match page, <laughs> actually, boy, that's a bizarre final page. <laughs> it's like the Goldberg match, the Funk, like a, a series of like house show hardcore matches with Terry Funk. Yeah, and then the the WWE run. Oh, right. Where it's like a bunch of six-man tags in like Turkey and Belgium and Germany. And yeah. Very bizarre. There's stuff there that I don't remember happening, like Bret Hart and John Cena versus Edge and Chris Jericho in a lumberjack match on Raw. <laughs> what? Okay, yeah, I don't... I remember they like pretended they were going to do Brett versus Undertaker on uh, 2010. <laughs> That's and then like as I don't even know if the bell sounded if it was an official match or not but then like the lights go out and Kane's in the ring or something. Okay, it's not on the cage match page, so I mean not that this is definitive, they miss stuff sometimes, but probably just an angle and not an official match. Yes. They did promote it as a match, though. And I was like, well, this is... I have no recollection of that. <laughs> I think it was like, it was the 900th Raw, I want to say. Yikes. Which was like a, a not good show. Seems like that would have been... Because er- Jericho and Edge versus Brett and Cena was 898. So it would have been two weeks after that. <laughs> okay. All right, that sounds yeah. Because I, I guess yeah, so it would have been around the it that SummerSlam been, next. Yeah, stuff. yeah, it would have been right before or right after that the SummerSlam. Bizarre. <laughs> yeah, on on Brett's birthday, WWE posted like a, here's a compilation of you know great moments in Brett, like lesser known but still great moments. And one was like Bret Hart winning the U.S. title from the Miz. And one was him wrestling Booker T and one, I think there was that sting match that you said was like the worst oh, match you ever saw. Yeah. Um, and, and then a couple other ones in there. I was like, Bret Hart and the Miz wrestled and Bret won the U S title. You don't say. Yeah. For some reason, I remember that one. Cause it was uh, on, I made a point to watch that raw on some of the legal stream uh, <laughs> because I knew Bret was going to be on, but. Yeah, I and mean, I remember that. I don't remember how they got the title off of him, though. I think maybe they just stripped him. Yeah, I think, yeah, he just, yeah, he either <laughs> gives it up or, or they strip him up. Because then he's the GM for, like, three weeks. Because they're yeah. like, we have him under contract. Right. What do we do now? Right. Ugh. Ugh. Weird. Very, very weird. His final career match, Bret Hart and John Cena defeated... Alberto Del Rio and Ricardo Rodriguez. <laughs> Amazing. What? <laughs> yeah, I would have thought it would have been like, wow. All right. Yeah. Uh, that was a what, house show? Raw number 955. Huh. <laughs> All in, right. Uh, in Ottawa, Ontario. Okay. His second at the last career match in Istanbul, Turkey at a house show. Bret Hart, Edge, and Rey Mysterio defeated Alberto Del Rio, Cody Rhodes, and Drew McIntyre. Wow. <laughs> what? <laughs>
That's 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 got to be like I mean Hogan's page has got to be like that too, right? Because he did those weird like six mans in in UK. Yeah, he TNA. only did two of them though, right? Oh, he only did a couple. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, his last match was like against Bully Ray, which <laughs> <laughs> the man well, who they can't... deserve each other, I guess. <laughs> well, as it turns out, they did. Yes, the man who canceled the New Japan Ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> Forced a Japanese businessman to go out and bow in shame. I had like I had completely forgotten that story until you messaged me <laughs> in the middle of the night about it, mm-hmm. and then I was like, "Canceled the oh my God. yeah!" It was like, "Oh, somebody was pissed off that they ran a show in the U.S. by themselves, right?" And the ambulance got canceled, <laughs> right? And it postponed the start of the show like an hour or an hour That's and a right. half or something. Yeah. Right. And they sent the Japanese businessman out to bow. <laughs> in shame. In shame. <laughs> so silly. Oh. I try to keep on keeping on. 